Hello and welcome to CineTracer version 0.55, early release. Uh, this is the virtual production update. It's our very first time having some virtual production tools like this virtual camera that you may have seen clips of uh, online in various places. Uh, in this video, we're going to be going over how to get started with virtual production. But first, we'll go over some of the normal updates that came in version 5.5. So two main things changed with CineTracer version 0.55. The first is that we have some new prefabs. We have a waiting room and we have a hallway with some columns in it. All of those pieces are pretty new and I wanted to give you uh, a kind of sample layout there. And we're gonna continue to add prefabs and add assets as time goes on. Uh, go check those out. The second thing that changed is that we are starting to rewrite all of the cameras, mostly to make way for the virtual production virtual camera and the eventual mixed reality. For a really quick roadmap, uh, we are going to be working on the cameras, again, specifically with virtual production, but redesigning them completely. Uh, and then second after that, we're going to be completely destroying and doing the actors, the humans, in a new way. So let's get started with virtual production in CineTracer. First off, what is virtual production? It's hard to say, but it's pretty much like mixing traditional filmmaking with virtual filmmaking that we do in CineTracer. So we're kind of incorporating more and more real world filmmaking things into CineTracer and that's pretty exciting for me. Hope that you guys are excited as well. So the first thing you're gonna need is a computer with an HTC Vive or Vive Pro system set up. And that's gonna come with two of these controllers and the head headset so you can like look around. We actually don't use the headset at all. We're just gonna be using the controllers and the tracker, which I'll show you. So you're gonna need to learn how to set up a Vive yourself. There's a lot of tutorials on it. The Vive is the second most used VR uh, headset gaming platform in the world. It's very reliable, it's really robust. So learn how to set it up, set up the base stations, get the controllers working, play one VR game or two. And once you have that all working, then CineTracer being a Steam game using Steam VR, it will work as well. And you'll have the motion controllers and the tracker. So once you have your Vive set up and your controllers are working in other VR games, our goal is to take one of these controllers or tracker and put a CineTracer camera on it in 3D. And so when we move this, we're gonna be able to pan the camera, we're gonna be able to turn it, and when you put it on a rig, one second, when you put it on a rig like this and you operate it like this, you get really nice uh, cinematic handheld footage and you can actually just put this on a tripod, move it on a tripod, put it on a jib, put it on a steady cam, a gimbal, anything you want, and you're gonna get that real motion, that real world camera motion into CineTracer, and it really changes the way that everything looks. This is very, very, very similar tech the, to the, what was used for virtual production in the latest Lion King movie. Uh, you might see like the almost exact same kind of rigs. This is very similar. We can do that in CineTracer. So uh, I'm gonna jump into CineTracer over here, and I'm gonna show you how you get started with our first virtual camera. Okay, so we are at the computer now. I'm in CineTracer, and if you've never seen this before, I really should have made a video on this. This is OBS over here, and right now it's recording the screen, right? So having two monitors is helpful, but this is how I record footage for this, and that is how CineTracer is designed. It's like a video game, and you record the footage like a video game. We actually have another workflow now too, but that's primarily how I do it. And I also have Steam VR running over here, and it's showing that my in my case, four base stations are there, and it's showing that my controller is being tracked. So Steam VR needs to be on. Steam VR needs to be telling you, hey, you have your controllers, everything's working, right? You have to have that first. So uh, what we're going to do in CineTracer now is uh, hit tab, and you'll see our new virtual camera. I'm going to click it. Oh, click it. Here it is. And it's kind of like, oh, like fly floating in the middle of nowhere, right? But it's going to sort itself out. You can still spin it like this. Uh, and if you want to grab it again and move it, which we're going to, hit G and you can continue moving it around. This will continue to evolve. This is our first version of it. Uh, so what you're going to want to do now is with it selected, uh, I'll go to the side so you can really see that it's selected. Uh, with it selected here, we're going to hit scan for controllers. And it's going to show that there's one. Uh, if you select it again, it shows the number six. That number doesn't really matter to you. It's kind of an internal number for me. And then if we click it, you'll see that all of a sudden the camera like jumped over here, right? So just generally now hit G and kind of spin it until it's roughly facing where you want and very roughly like where you want its position. So I'm going to kind of put it there. And now if we get up close to it, you'll see that if I pick up the controller, right? This is the magical part that this thing is moving around right now. Uh, kind of crazy, right? And so if you're new to VR, you have to consider like, hey, where's the center of my stage? My stage is actually way over there and it's 
pretty gigantic. I have like, you know, a lot of base stations. I'm doing like virtual production in Unreal Engine with it. But anyway, um, what you want to do is get it basically lined up like this. And now you can hit M, right? And you can see the monitor like this. You move it around. You can see the, the camera. I'm going to hit M to get out of there. I'm going to hit F and jump into it. This is just like every other Cinetracer camera. And now you'll see as I move this camera up and down, it's moving. I can pan. I can tilt. I can go sideways with it. And it's tracking the motion. So specifically, if you're using a controller, there's a couple things I built in. We're going to keep working on these controls. If you use the uh, top faces, like this button here, I forget what they're called. I'm still learning. Uh, basically, if you push up, it'll zoom in. If you push back, it'll zoom out, right? And the same controls are still active for the mouse and keyboard, except movement for now, right? So WASD doesn't do anything. You won't move. Um, but what you want to do actually is, uh, like say we want to set focus, uh, you're going to have to click the mouse. So we're, we're working on it still. But you can focus at the background with the mouse. And uh, I know it's a little shaky. Sorry if this is kind of like nauseating to watch. But it's still the same controls more or less with scroll for now. Uh, to change focal length can be done here. And you can change ISO, etc. You can change the focus mode. And it's basically like the other cameras except for you're taking control of it now like this. So this is really shaky in a bad demo. But... Again, if you, if you rig this to your handheld rig, it's much smoother. And if you're using OBS, like I am, you're now recording this as well. So this will work with the Vive Tracker. It'll show up uh, just as another one. And if you have all three, like two controllers and a Vive, uh, when you go back out to this screen, or Vive Tracker rather, uh, when you go back to this screen and you do scan for controllers, you're going to get three. And you just have to click through which, which one you want to be connected to and then kind of be like, oh, which one is it? And you'll figure it out. Uh, so that's how you get started uh, with the virtual camera here. Uh, let's jump back over to there and we'll talk about it a little bit more. Cool, so that is the basic workflow with the controller, with the tracker. Uh, we can basically control the pan, the tilt, the, like the whole position and rotation of this controller gets put onto the cameras and it's a lot of fun. You should really try it out. Uh, if you're someone like me who gets a little bit sick in regular VR with the headset, this is like a lot of the cool functionality of VR without having to put the headset on. So I really like that. For a more slightly uh, advanced setup, what you can do next, uh, if your computer has the outputs, is you can actually put the Cinetracer monitor into an HDI monitor here. So what you'll want to do is get this all working there first, you know, operate off of the computer monitor. That's what I did for like a couple days. Uh, but when you want to get the footage here and like actually operate it handheld, uh, you're going to need to do output from your computer through HDMI, and you're going to want to mirror your primary display that's playing Cinetracer, just mirror that to this. This monitor will show up as another display, and you need to mirror it there. I'm not going to go over that right now. It's different on Windows, it's different on Mac OS. If this even works on Mac OS, I haven't tested that. We're going to talk about that in a second, but just look into how your computer system needs to mirror monitors. This will show up as a monitor, and you're just going to put Cinetracer on this, and you'll be operating all at once. This is like the full setup. It's a little bit more involved. You're gonna need a longer HDMI cable, but this is the real fun version. And then you can even record the footage, the Cinetracer footage here, which is a lot of fun too. So that wraps up this update on our first virtual production tools. I'm pretty excited about it. Um, some quick disclaimers and things about this. This is beyond experimental. I'm still very new to this. Uh, I figured out how to do it in Unreal Engine like a week or two ago, and I immediately put it in Cinetracer. I want people to try it. Will it work on your system? I, I don't know. Uh, I know that it works on Windows with Steam VR with a Vive Pro with Base Station 2.0s. Next up, will it work with the original Vive, like the older Vive with the other base stations? It probably will. Uh, it will also probably work with the Valve Index. If you have a Valve Index, you're a pretty advanced uh, VR user, I imagine. Um, that's still Steam VR. I imagine the Valve Index controller works, but that thing's a little bit weird to uh, mount on a camera, but hey, it probably does work. Works with Vive trackers. Uh, we do not know if it works with the Oculus Rift. I haven't tried it yet. Uh, I suspect because it works through Steam VR that the Oculus Rift doesn't talk to Steam VR, but we'll find out. Let me know if you try it with the Rift and it works. That's cool. Uh, other than that, I'll have to see if there's a different way of integrating for the Rift. Uh, it will definitely not work with the Oculus Quest. None of the, um, you know, the, the self-contained ones, that's just not gonna work. Uh, it doesn't work that way. Um, okay, hopping in for one more note. This is a big one for the Cinetracer community, I know, is that I do not know if this works on Mac OS 
yet. I just don't know, I haven't tried it. Uh, one of the main things is that my Vive Pro needs DisplayPort. So I don't have DisplayPort on my iMac Pro, which is a pretty high-end computer, or on my uh, MacBook Pro. So I don't know if you can do like a USB dongle to it. And you know, in general, the Vive requires a lot of USB ports. I guess it only needs one now, but I just haven't tested it on the Mac. If you have a Mac computer and you have a Vive or Vive Pro and it works, please let me know. Uh, I'll be testing that in the future. My Vive system is kind of tied up at the moment. I don't really want to take it down to test it on my Macs, but uh, please let me know if it does work. <laughs> Uh, and we'll we'll know over time, but just right now it's very fresh. I don't want to take that system down yet uh, to test it anywhere else. Uh, just let me know. That'd be very helpful to know if it works. Cool. Thank you very much. And moving into the future, if you've been following the main YouTube channel and you're interested in doing mixed reality, which is what I have behind me, which is shooting green screen footage of people and then putting those people into the, uh, in this case, Cinetracer background, we are working on a workflow for that. Uh, I do believe it's going to be possible with basically any camera and Cinetracer. Um, but, you know, my caveat is that the fidelity, the quality of the tracking and, and the lining everything up, it's not going to be anywhere near as good as if you do it in Unreal Engine, which, I've, which is what I've been showing before. But if you want to get like a simple version of it to kind of test the technology, I do believe I'll be able to accomplish that in the next, um, I'd say, month or so uh, of testing and updating. So that's the update, virtual production. Uh, we're gonna continue to work on cameras. We're gonna add more assets and just same old, same old, but now we have some kind of cool virtual camera. So uh, let me know in the description below if you do get it working. And um, I would love to see clips of it on Instagram, even just a picture of like your rig and Cinetracer or video of it working. That's just really helpful for me to know as the developer, they're like, hey, it's working, people get it. And if there's enough excitement behind it, enough people going and using it, I will continue to make the tools better and better. So I'll see you guys on the next video.